What's up YouTube and welcome to my first ever YouTube series, A Beginner's Guide to Dark Souls. Now before I go any further, I just want to apologize about the video quality. Um, I only have the composite cables that come with the Xbox Slim and I'm going to be picking up the component cables later this week. So this video and the next few videos will be in composite quality and uh, I apologize in advance for that. Uh, a little bit about myself, I've been playing video games uh, since I was about 6 years old. My first system was an N64 and Super Mario 64, which I still love that game. Maybe you'll even see it on this channel, who knows. So you can kind of date when I started playing from that game. Uh, I used to be a hardcore WoW player, but I stopped just after the pandas were released, and uh, I don't currently plan on returning. Uh, Rord was my first character name, so I chose that alias online. It just, it just has a nice ring to it, I think. Anyways, on to the, uh, the task. The reason I decided to make this guide is because whenever I watch other people's guides online, they're never quite complete guides to the game. They always either skip certain parts, don't fully explain things, and use a lot of the game's built-in shortcuts. What I'm making here is a full, comprehensive guide to Dark Souls, coming from someone who has played through the game over a dozen times and has multiple characters on further new games. I'm going to clear every area, find every secret that I'm aware of, and show new players exactly how to handle every situation, from my perspective. I'm not going to delve too much into the game's lore, if you really want a good lore series, go over to Epic Name Bros channel, he's got a great one going on over there. Uh, and note that this game is from my perspective, so if you feel there's a better way to handle a situation I've encountered, go ahead and leave a comment on the video, and I'll be sure to include it in the next video, because it's always good to have better tips. Always, also guys, because this is meant for new players, I probably won't be parrying very much. Uh, parrying is a skill that you develop, you know, knowing an enemy's attack pattern quite well, uh, and most new players won't have that skill. So we will be backstabbing, however, don't you worry about that. Now the way I'm going to do the commentary for this video will be a mix of post and live. I'll be doing live commentary for the vast majority of the playthrough, but during boss fights I'll switch to post. This is to allow me some thinking room while I'm fighting the boss, because explaining a strategy and trying to fight a boss effectively might not go over so well, and I want the boss fights in particular to have good commentary. Now on to the build. Um, the thing I'm going to use, I usually use a strength build or a strength dex hybrid. Uh, I think this time I'm going to try out a full dex build. I really want to use the Partisan. Uh, I discovered it during one of my playthroughs and it has a really interesting quality to it and I want to exploit that quality and uh, I'll go more into detail about what that is when we pick it up. Uh, I also want to try out Lucerne. I've heard some really good things about that weapon, about its thrust damage, so uh, we'll pick that up too. Not sure if I'll use any spells. I may get enough faith to use a heal spell to help us with Estus, but I probably won't need it. Um, I also really want to use pieces of the Elite Knight set and be able to fast roll, so we'll be able. We'll see what we can be done there. Um, first thing I'm going to do is show everyone that without farming and without upgrading anything but your starting weapon. You can easily take down the game's first challenging boss and come out with too, out too many bumps and bruises. Please note to everyone that during this first video I'm going to be explaining basic things such as character control and menu navigation. So for anyone who's familiar with the game and just wants to see an instructional playthrough, go ahead and skip to the next video now. Alright, so let's start here. Let's uh, make our character. Um, hmm. What should we name our character? Uh, we could be original or we could just uh, pirate. So I think we're going to call our character Jack. Jack Daniels. We're going to have good old JD running around in the Dark Souls universe. Jack Daniels, the warrior. Classic. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go with the warrior class. It's a really good starting class to pick off or start off with. It uh, starts with the longsword, which is a super versatile weapon. Really good move set. Uh, the warrior also has pretty decent armor and a really good starting shield. So if you're looking for a good starting class and you don't know what to pick, warrior is definitely a good starting class. The other classes, of course, are good too. They have their own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, the bandit is my second favorite. Uh, he has probably the highest damage of the starting classes, but uh, I like the warrior because of the longsword mostly. So we're going to go with the warrior, which is what I would recommend you pick. Um, 
Most people would pick the master key, but uh, I recommend for a first playthrough, pick something else. Doesn't really matter. Uh, I think we're going to go with the old witch's ring this time. We'll, uh, we'll find out what that does later on in the playthrough. Uh, we'll just go with average. Nothing's fancy. Um, let's see here. <laughs> that always that always makes me laugh. Uh, oof, wide-eyed there. Uh, I think, uh, well, commoner is too common, of course, but, uh, I mean, that kind of looks normal, right? Yeah. Uh, let's get some hair going. What do we got? Uh, nah, nah. Hmm. Maybe that in a different color? Let's see. Huh. Huh. Hey, you look kind of like Leon from, uh, from Resident Evil 4. Huh. <laughs> Should've named him Leon. Actually, I think I will. Huh. Yep, he's Leon now. Alright, so uh, let's get this game started and uh, I'll let the cutscene take it away. In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and with fire came disparity. Heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then, from the dark, they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, the first of the dead. The Witch of Isolith and her Daughters of Chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight and his Faithful Knights. And the furtive Pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenged the dragons. Gwyn's mighty bolts peeled apart their stone skins. The witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease. Scales betrayed his own, and the dragons were no more. Thus began the Age of Fire. But soon the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. Even now, there are only embers, and man sees not light, but only endless nights. And amongst the living are seen 
barriers of the accursed dark side. All right, so you can see lots of stuff happening in that intro cutscene. Be remember that stuff because uh, it's quite important, very important, in fact. Those characters are quite important. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. Oh, so as you can see, uh, we do not look like we did uh, in the customization screen. We are undead. We are of the undead, corralled to the north. And uh, this kindly knight has dropped us an item. So that obviously is the key out of here. So what you're going to want to do is, uh, you know, with every game you just get, familiarize yourself with the controls, try out the buttons, see what they do. Uh, if you learn right away why puts your weapon in two hands. When your weapon's in two hands, it does uh, increase damage, and it also gives you a 50% bonus to your strength stat. So say you had 16 strength, it would make it as if you had 24 strength, and that's very useful later on. Uh, we'll get into why that's useful later on. Uh, the B button is the rolling action, as you can see here. Uh, the rolling action uh, speed is dictated by your equip burden. Uh, if your equip burden is under 25%, uh, you will do what is called a fast roll, which is faster than the roll I've been doing. Uh, if you have 25% up to 50%, you will do a mid roll, which is this roll right here. Uh, and if you have over 50%, up to 100%, you do what is called a fat roll, which I like to call the chunky dunk. And it is a pretty terrible roll. It's almost unusable, but it's not completely unusable. I have used it a few times successfully, but uh, I wouldn't recommend rolling with it. Um, the A button pretty much just interacts with the environment. The X button is used to use an item, but we do not have any items currently, so it just kind of does nothing. Um, then you move over to the D-pad. Uh, if you press the D-pad right and left, uh, it actually switches to a weapon that you would have equipped there, but since we only have a broken sword it only goes to uh, it only puts our weapon away this is also true with the left hand side but we don't have anything equipped there um, the top one is reserved for spells but we don't actually have any slots for spells so that won't be of use to us at all alright let's get into the menu press start to open the menu uh, really really important thing to note about the menu in this game is you can keep moving around and enemies will keep killing you while the menu's open, but you can't attack while the menu's open. You can just, you can't roll, you can't do anything. So this this has actually killed me a few times in my first playthrough. So just remember, if you, all of a sudden you can't do anything, you probably have the menu open. All right, uh, first thing you wanna do is look at your status screen. Uh, most new players will look at this status screen and say, oh my God, numbers, and they won't read it and they'll just close it because they don't understand what's going on. But uh, you're going to really want to look at this screen. The screen's extremely important. 
Uh, if you press the back button, it highlights a certain thing and gives you a little description, and you can move down with the D-pad to look at all the different things, even over here. Give you a good description of what all the stats do. Um, all the stats are decent except for resistance. You can never ever level resistance because resistance only increases your defense by well increases your defense a decent amount but it doesn't block that much damage in comparison to how much damage you could get from leveling a stat like say dexterity or strength so it just it outweighs it's just a horrible thing to level don't level resistance uh, unless you're going for a max level character it's really not worth the investment in any way it's it's pretty much looked down upon if you invest in it I mean, you could do a full resistance character and see how it goes yourself, but I'm just saying uh, it's really not a good thing. Uh, strength and Dexterity are the attacking stats. Uh, there are different weapons for Strength and Dexterity. Strength is typically slower, more powerful weapons. Dexterity are fast, uh, smaller weapons. Um, there is Intelligence stat here, which is dictates your magic damage. Uh, it dictates your magic damage note, but not pyromancy damage. So it's a good thing to note for new players, uh, for pyromancers, you, your intelligence stat does not dictate your damage. So do not level intelligence if you're trying to make yourself do more damage with your fire. Um, the endurance stat increases your stamina uh, and equip load, also your resistance to bleeding. Uh, this is probably one of the best stats to level. Uh, it, you know, having more stamina increases the uh, amount of things you can do before running out of stamina. It increases your equip load, which makes you able to wear heavier items without rolling slower. It's just a general good stat. Vitality is the health stat, which in every RPG is, it's. I mean, it's the health stat. You're always going to have to level it. You're always going to need some health. It's a very basic stat. Uh, the attunement stat, however, is the stat that dictates your item or your uh, spell slot, sorry. Uh, having 10 attunement would give me one slot, having 12 attunement would give me two slots, and so forth. Uh, after 19, it takes a lot more to get another attunement slot, but we'll never probably even have... We might have one attunement slot, but probably not. Uh, you can see over here my equip load is uh, 52, and I have 17 at 0.4 to 52, so that's why I'm mid-rolling. Uh, the stat over here that a lot of people won't recognize is poise. Uh, poise is the stat that dictates whether you will be knocked off guard while attacking an enemy and they are attacking you. So say you're swinging a sword at an enemy and the enemy swings a sword at you and you get hit before you hit them and you have no poise or low poise, you will be staggered and your attack won't go through. Um, this is dangerous because if your opponent has a fast weapon, they can stagger lock you to death and you have nothing you can do because you know, you're staggered. There's nothing you, you literally cannot do anything. So having poise is very good. It's extremely useful to have poise. Uh, so look for it on gear if you can. Typically heavier armor has poise, so you will usually have to trade out poise for roll speed, so it's, a, it's kind of a trade-off. So let's get back to uh, the main game here. And uh, we're going to pull out our sword hilt and move on. Uh, another control is to work out. If you click in the right stick, you will lock on to an enemy. This is extremely useful because you can just strafe around enemies like this. You don't have to worry about your swings missing them because you're locked onto them. Uh, if you press and hold the right left bumper, sorry, you will block, but since we do not have a shield up, it just punches. A little jab like that. Uh, these hollows here are actually not hostile. They will not attack you no matter what you do. So you can just uh, punch them down. Um, the right trigger is a strong attack. It takes up more stamina and does less, or it does more damage, but uh, it's typically slower than the weak attacks, which is the right bumper, like like this. Uh, these are usually the more common attacks that you'll use in the game, is the uh, right bumper attacks. Because a lot of weapons, the uh, right trigger attacks, that while they're powerful, like that, see it's in 16, and the, uh, the right bumper does 13, see? Uh, usually they're, of course, slower and leaving you open to damage, which, of course, is not good. Uh, pulling the left trigger will do this motion, which is a parry motion. Uh, what a parry is, is you can, when an enemy is swinging at you, you can hit them, or you can use this, hit this with the, ah, sorry, hit them with this parry button, and uh, it will knock their 
attack away. So you have to time it very, very carefully. And when you knock their attack away, it'll leave them open to what is known as a riposte. And you can hit them for basically a critical attack for a huge amount of damage. But uh, this is a skill, like I said, you develop later in the game. We won't be using it much in this playthrough. I might show it off a few times, but uh, we're not going to rely on it or anything. So uh, we're just going to make our way through the Berg. Uh, sorry, through the Asylum. We used to run through the Berg. Uh, Make sure to read these orange messages on the ground. I'm not because, you know, I don't really need to read them, but uh, they give you useful information left by the developers, and later on, it will give you information left by other players. So this one says, of course, rest at bonfire, recover HP. So uh, sure, we'll do that. So when you rest at a bonfire, it completely heals you. It resets all enemies in the area. That means it doesn't just reset their... Uh, their aggro, it will reset them completely. So if you've killed all the enemies in the area and you touch a bonfire, it will respawn every enemy, except for certain non-respawning enemies, of course. Uh, there will usually be more options at the bonfire, but not this one because it's uh, in the tutorial level, so we're just going to move on here to this doorway. Now if you've heard throughout here, you can probably hear these, uh, this strange thumping around. It's very good in this game to notice your surroundings. You can hear that there's something creeping around here, so it's good to look around. There's also a blood stain here. A blood stain will show you the last seconds of another player's death, which uh, in a lot of situations can help you avoid that same death. So let's try to see what uh, how this person died here. So he appears to be fighting something uh, that's knocking him down to the ground quite easily in this area, but there's nothing here. So, uh, what could that be, perhaps? What does this say? Oh, could it be that? It could be that. There's a door over here. Just run through this doorway as quick as possible. You're, uh, you're, that is a scripted event. You're not supposed to fight him there. Uh, your weapon does almost no damage to him, and it will take mm, 15, 20 minutes to kill him, and uh, it's just not worth it. Just come here, rest at this bonfire. Uh, don't get used to bonfires being so plentiful. They're doing this to be nice. That says get your shield, which is a good indicator that there's a shield nearby. Come out here. Come over to this item. Pick it up. And it is a heater shield, of course. Uh, to equip an item, go to your change equipment screen. And it'll bring up this screen, which shows all the gear we are wearing. Uh, this is the only way to equip items. If you try to do it through the uh, inventory screen, you won't be able to. So come down here to this left hand slot, click it, and place the heater shield there. So we're going to take a look at the shield. Uh, a lot of the stats on the shield are pretty basic. You can see the shield actually does damage, so if you put it in the right hand, you can actually hit people with your shield. It's pretty funny. It doesn't do much damage. Just It's just, I don't know, it's kind of hilarious. Um, if you see the parameter bonus down there, that this applies to all weapons. All weapons have scaling. Uh, it is a grading of E, D, C, B, A, and S. S being the best, E being the worst. Uh, this determines how much damage your weapon gains from that stat. The farthest to the left there is strength, followed by dexterity, and then intelligence and faith. So this heater shield has a D grading in strength, so it gains, you know, not very much from our strength, but it doesn't gain from anything else, so yeah, that's it's not very very well used for damage. Uh, scaling is super, super useful uh, for determining which item to use because if you're a high dex character, you're obviously going to want to use a weapon with a, a B or an A scaling in dexterity. Or say if you're a high faith character, you'd obviously want to use a high faith weapon. This is how you determine your high damage, of course. Uh, over on the right side of the screen there, you can see the damage reduction of the shield. Uh, it has a 100% physical, 30% to magic, 70% to fire, and 50% to lightning. So it's a pretty good shield overall. It has good fire defense and what, perfect physical defense, which is very good for a starting shield. Um, the other stat over there is stability. This is an extremely important, probably the most important stat other than uh, damage reduction on a shield. This determines how much stamina you lose when you get hit by an attack. Uh, higher stability means less damage law or less stamina loss and when you upgrade a shield that is usually what is being upgraded is the stability of your shield so upgrading your shield is super super important so we're gonna move on here uh, you can block this guy or you can just roll past the arrow he just runs away he's kind of a pussy um, 
And here is our weapon, the longsword. So, same thing as before, go to the equipment screen, change it for our straight, long, our straight sword hilt because it does uh, almost no damage. So, uh, let's look at the longsword first. You can see here it has a C scaling in strength and a C scaling in dex. This is what is known as a quality weapon. It has a decent scaling in both strength and dexterity. So you can use this if you're using a build that you know likes to have a little bit of everything. It's a very versatile weapon. It has pretty low stat requirements. Oh, I did forget to explain that. Uh, over on the right there where it says required parameters, that is the required stats to wield the item. Or wield the weapon, sorry. Um, if you're using the weapon in two hands, the strength requirement is reduced by 50% because you gain 50% when you two-hand a weapon, which is what I mentioned earlier. Uh, so we're being hit by an arrow guy who has apparently come back to say hello. So uh, we're going to... Oh, apparently we didn't uh, equip our sword. So let's equip our sword and uh, let's take him out with a uh, stab attack. As you can see he goes down in one thrust attack. Pretty pretty easy to kill enemy. Nothing special there. Just uh, continue on. Usually he stands up here shooting arrows, but since we took our time down there, I guess he came uh, to ask us what we were doing. Uh, so, come out here. Uh, come over here. This message teaches you how to backstep. If you're standing still and you press B, you'll do a backstep. Not very useful. You won't use it very much in the game. Uh, rolling is much better propels you farther. Uh, pressing the control stick and rolling obviously lets you roll in certain directions like this. If you run out of stamina you will not be able to roll. So running out of stamina, just using up your stamina in general to the max is not a good thing. You're always going to want to keep a little bit because you never know when you're going to need to roll away or hit something. Uh, when you have your shield raised like this, your stamina regenerates much slower. I'll demonstrate here. Uh, as you can see, I'm out of stamina. My stamina is coming back. I'll swing again. I'll run out of stamina, and then I will raise my shield. As you can see, my stamina is coming back at an extremely slow rate. So if you're blocking attacks, it's good to lower your shield in between attacks so your stamina comes back faster. So run up the stairs and dodge out of the way really... Oh. Uh, I'm going to get tagged there, but that boulder is pretty easily dodged. And it uh, opens up this back passage here, which uh, took me a while to find on my first playthrough, to be honest. And hey look, it's that knight we, who saved us, so let's, uh, let's see what he has to oh, say. You. You're no hollow. Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I, we're both undead. Hear me out, will you? Sure, I'll hear you out. Regrettably, I have failed in my mission. But perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know. And I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask. An undead favorite. Oh, and this. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now, and thank you. All right, and this character, uh, his name is never set in the game, but his name is Oscar, and he was intended to have a larger role in the game, but his role was removed later in production. So now he's just here as a dying knight who gives you the potion of the game, which is an Estus flask. Uh, the Estus flask is a refillable item that, when you use it at a bon, when you sit at a bonfire, it will refill the charges. And it is the basic healing item of the game, and you use X to use one, which we will do right now, to refill our health to max. So we will bid farewell to Oscar here and uh, go about our undead mission. So he did say something about Bells of Awakening and Chosen Undead and all that silliness, so uh, what could that be about? Are we a pilgrimage? Or are we doing a pilgrimage here? What could be happening? We'll find out, won't we? So yeah, go down there and open that door, and uh, 
it'll lead you back to the first bonfire, so it's a good shortcut to have. So we're going to go ahead and run up here. Uh, we're going to just hold B. If you hold B, B and move forward, you will sprint. And uh, we will encounter the first uh, sword-wielding hostile enemy in the game. As you can see with most enemies, when they hit your shield like that, they bounce off their sh they bounce off like that and get staggered themselves. This is a perfect opportunity to hit them. They actually take increased damage when they are staggered like that. So, uh, as you can see, you can just slash them like that. See, the first swing did 61 damage, and the second swing did about 53 damage. I don't know, in the 50s. So, uh, you can see it does do slightly more damage when they are staggered. So, uh, head on and go through this door. Sure to read the messages on the ground. I'm ignoring them, of course. Uh, careful around this corner. There are two guys here. Uh, if you two-hand your weapon, you do, of course, much more damage. And I'll demonstrate it here. Oh, let me get it here. And uh, look at that. 89 damage, I believe that was. 89 damage. Yep. See, it does much more damage, but it does take up... Uh, about half our stamina. That's a strong attack there. It's a very useful strong attack. It propels you forward a few feet, so it's good to uh, close the distance quickly. Weak attack is also very good. So, uh, vertical slashes. So uh, we're gonna head over here. As you can see, there's a there's an archer guy here. So just uh, put your shield up, maneuver around him, and uh, if you come right behind a target and lower your shield, you will get a backstab like I just did. You have to be directly behind them and your shield has to be lowered. If your shield is up like this, it will not work. You will just do a normal slash. And you have to be directly behind them. You can't be back a few feet. Um, this is the first real enemy in the game. He has a sword and shield, and uh, it's actually quite difficult for new players. I'll show you how to circle around him and backstab. They're very common enemies later on. And there you go. You just circle around there, and you go to that little spot right near their back, and press the attack button, the uh, weak attack button, sorry, and you will get a backstab. And see, he actually has Nestus Floss too, and he will try to heal, but uh, it's a perfect opportunity to get a nice stab in on him. And he has fallen, of course. So, uh, as you can see here, there's another white light. Uh, white lights in this game typically mean a boss encounter, so it's always good to be prepared when you're going through a white light for a boss encounter. Uh, this is the f only boss encounter in the game I will not do post-commentary for because it's quite simple. So here we go. We're going to go through this and I'll show you guys what's up. Uh, as you can see the monster from earlier is down there. You're going to want to hand your weapon, drop off, and hit the weak attack. And you will perform a plunge attack into his head. Then you're going to want to run around him like this and stay directly behind him. And just don't lock on and just hit him. He's very simple. Uh, as you can see here, all his attacks are missing. And with a few swings... Oh! Yep, see this is why you do not want to be uh, in front of him. He is actually slightly difficult. And... Oh! I'm, uh, I'm not doing well here. This is interesting. Pull up my shield. Shouldn't have to do this. Uh, that's his flying attack. Down he goes. And just run up and... Yep, usually it's a lot easier than that. Uh, I got tagged a few times. I don't usually do that. But uh, there you go. You'll probably get tagged a few times if you're a new player. It's not deathly. You can kill him quite easily there. Uh, I did lock on at the end. I don't usually do that. But uh, I was kind of scared to get hit again. But uh, there you go. First boss down. He's quite easy. Just uh, remember to stay behind him. And do not... Uh, do not stay in front of him, because uh, you can see that uh, quickly led to me getting smacked around. Uh, when you come out here, you're obviously we've escaped the asylum, so so let's do a cheer for that. Oh yeah. Um. By the way, pressing the back button will bring up this list of gestures, which uh, you can do for awesome effect. Uh, so taking your first step out of the asylum, it's always good to explore new area, which is what we'll do. So let's explore over here. Explore over here, you will find an item. And this is a Soul of Lost Undead. This is a soul item. It grants you a small amount of souls when you use it. Uh, I recommend not using these items until you get to a bonfire, because you don't want to use it and then or lose it and then die. And, you know, that would just suck, because 
you could have used it at the bonfire and not having wasted it because you died on the way back to your bloodstain. So, uh, we're gonna walk over here. Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. Leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordran. So, as you can see here, we have been dropped off in the far-off land of Lordran. And this is where I'm going to leave off the video. So, uh, stay tuned for the next video, and I will see you later.